So working on the front end of the Max today and got some frustration. So I talked about in a couple of videos, um, you know, some of the steering issues and all that kind of thing. So putting in the bump steer delete kit from Shock Therapy, um, trying to figure out getting a Hess brace, you know, this week, but spent money on something else that I'll have a video on soon. Um, so here's the mess that I'm working with right now. So if you take a look right here, you're gonna see obviously, oh man, that is an ugly boot right there, bro. Uh, so that's all torn up. I think it's because if you look kind of right in, right in there, let's see if get the light on it. If you see the, uh, <clears throat> for the upper ball joint, it looks like it's contacting the boot and it tore. I've had tons and tons of problems with the boots on this car. And so that's really been kind of a bummer that I've been working on. The other thing that I wanted to talk about and show you guys <clears throat> is the, I was talking about the steering, still talking about steering, but <clears throat> here's a better look <clears throat> at the steering assembly on the, from the Super ATV <clears throat> tie rod. So you can see, all right, so I went ahead and pulled the ball joints out um, or pulled the ball joint out on the driver's side. And <clears throat> so, like I said, you know, uh, or I don't know if I mentioned one of the things that I thought tore the boot was the length of the ball joint. And this is the ball joint that came pre-installed on the arm that I bought from XYZ Company that I've already mentioned before. Um, but if you look between the factory Can-Am and then the... Um, this aftermarket one, there is a difference in the overall length. Well, take a look right there. So you can see, if you look at them, from the seating surface on each side, I'm gonna let, go ahead and try and level them out here. Seating surface on each side, those are definitely not the same length in any way, shape, or form. So um, I, I, I put the, I put it on the um, good old trusty calipers and it said about almost, it was almost three millimeters difference, uh, one versus the other. This is the first time this has happened. Those have been in there for probably 500 miles. Um, <clears throat> but it's, uh, my suspension gets fully drooped out a lot. And so whenever it goes to full droop, it just, I got unlucky and it tore the boot. I, you know, I made sure that I put the cotter pin in a way that it wouldn't, you know, contact or tear the boot but I guess just rubbing on you know the end of this fastener or the end of these threads for long enough finally tore it so um it needed to be replaced anyway uh it had some uh the booted torn um so one of those maintenance things you got to do on these things uh and also get the joy of of course when I was trying to pull the axle how did it come out well it didn't come out whole so now I got to figure out how to get all that fixed <clears throat> and <laughs> pull that out. So more fun X3 maintenance <laughs> coming your way. All right, so still working on the Max. Uh, did some horse trading, ended up being able to get a Hess rack while I had the front end of the car totally apart, basically, uh, rack support. Um, couple things on it, just kind of an update to the earlier video that I did. So this is, um, this is what's actually gonna slide inside of uh <clears throat> inside of the brace and one of the cool things that i couldn't remember what material was made out of on the previous one but um it is delrin right so this is uh this is plastic fancy plastic but it's plastic nonetheless so this is going to wear out first sliding inside of that aluminum track and so you're going to see you know they kind of changed the design from the photos you have on the internet it's not, the flag bolts aren't exposed here. Um, it's, so it's all gonna slide in this channel back here and it's gonna slide back and forth, uh, go just left and right, you know, like we talked about <clears throat> on the two-seater video. So uh, anodizing looked pretty good. Um, and I'd say the fit and finish improved from the first one that I installed, or well, at least the finish, the, the anodizing was a little, it wasn't quite as gray, you know, as this is, it was a little more patchy, but, um, Looking good, you know, no big tooling marks or anything like that on there. So looking forward to getting this installed on the car and cleaning up the steering. And I'm going to post a review um, next time I ride it.
All right, so did the Hess rack on the rack support on the two seater. A couple things to kind of update you on. Um, I guess on the older car, so I called Hess yesterday and, and a couple things. So uh, I already showed you guys that the um, material that actually slides inside of, and we've got a good view of it right now because the, the car is apart. So you can see um, the rack supports in here, the flag uh, and the bolts on the flag are completely hidden. If you look in there, they are not at all um, exposed. So I did talk to Hess yesterday. So I've got this shimmed. If you look, the top and the bottom are even, right, on the chassis. I used the one thick shim, and then in talking to them, one of the things they said, so this design is slotted now on the rack brace or rack support. Um, and what they've done with that, with the slotting in it, uh, they want you to actually use that half moon um, bracket whenever you are putting this thing back in on these older, well, this is an 18. Um, and you know, whenever you put it in, it's cause this, it, these bolts in here are actually slotted, right? So you can't see it now that the fasteners are in, but inside of this area, this, the rack can adjust up and down and they want you to continue to use that half moon, the factory spacer in there whenever you're going ahead and installing this, just because that's going to give you, um, it's not going to let the rack potentially move up and down, right? So it's, it's stuck. Um, and then you've got, you know, the brace tightened down and, and it's all attached and the flags, you know, located in there. Um, really positively, really nice. The other thing, whenever you're shimming it is what you really want to do. Um, whenever you're shimming it is you've got it shim correctly. If steering left to right, all the way through the, you know, the range of travel of the steering wheel. As long as there's no binding or anything like that from side to side, you're good to go. So uh, yeah, putting the car back together and you know, just trying to get a video and update you know, to my earlier video from you know, doing the, uh, can't see it right now because the kid stroller thing's in the way, but from doing it on the two seat. So rock on guys, have a good one. All right, so set um, got the car back on the ground and I'm setting the toe. Um, couple things about that. So for a really reasonable amount of money, you can get a set of toe plates there. These are the long anchor racing products ones. Um, they make it really, really easy to set the toe and know exactly what your toe is at. Uh, and you know, and you go to the other side and you'll have, um, it's nice. They actually have little magnets on these pieces of aluminum. You don't have to buy this stuff, but you know, I set the toe on a couple different vehicles, and so it's really, really easy to do that. Um, it's worth the money. I think it was like a hundred bucks for this, you know, two tape measures and two pieces of aluminum. Maybe it's less than that. I, I can't remember. I'll put a link in the description below. Um, but I made a stupid mistake, and <laughs> I was trying to get it done. It's late. It's uh, well, late for me. It's nine o'clock, um, and what I did, and I'll show you right now. What I did was because I was always, you know, I'm always in a hurry, um, which is never the right thing to do. Uh, I, when I went in there, so these are the CT Raceworks um, billet tie rods, and they have the shock therapy bump steer geometry on there. And I'm setting these in the car because, you know, like I already showed you guys earlier, I'd put the Hess rack in. Um, but, you know, in a rush, didn't think about it, and right there. I have no more ability to go toe out. I am limited by that nut. Really, whenever I'm going in, whenever I was doing this on the last car, I set both you know ends kind of in the middle of their range on both sides so that you could adjust it and you wouldn't have any problems. Um, ah, dang it. Um, one of the other things though, really quick, so this is an XDS and I've got the tape measures pulled tight. They're parallel to the ground. Um, and so what you're looking at, so toe, you know, think of toes is like your foot and the toe is the front of the tire. Um, so whenever you're setting the toe for the front of the car, you want to, I run these at like zero toe. Um, some guys I've seen say run like an eighth toe in. So that way as the tires cycle through their travel and they scrub out, um, it is gonna go to zero toe. Uh, they say, you know, some people say it tracks better and all that kind of thing. Actually, since I've got to redo this anyway, I'm going to do that. Um, but one of the interesting things to look at, so just really quick, you can see in the rear. So 
were at roughly 67 uh, or just under 67 inches and in the front were right just past 65 inches, right? Um, if we were setting zero toe, we'd want both of the tape measures to be, we would want both of the tape measures to be at the exact same number. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that, get that fixed. I'm gonna do it tomorrow um, because I'm tired and I've been in the garage for a long time. Uh, and that's it, and so. All right, so got the, uh, got the toe set, ended up only having to actually adjust one side. Um, have an eighth inch of toe on each side, which uh, pretty sure two eighths is a quarter. Uh, last time I checked here, I'm that at fraction, so I might be wrong about that. But, um, you know, it's, uh, yeah, should be set up nice. I'm gonna actually go ahead and check the rear as well. I have a sneaking suspicion that my pat and my driver rear toe link is actually set up so that it's quite a bit towed in. And I, I think I want zero toe. I'm gonna consult the, uh, I'm gonna consult the Can-Am manual on that. I'm just gonna go ahead and say, I'm doing zero toe in the back no matter what. Um, and yeah, so it's, uh, car's pretty much done. Gonna go out and test it, but it has literally been raining all day long here. So not really the best day for that, but uh, maybe it stops, I'll do a dry run on the street, which will give me an idea of, you know, the Hess rack and the steering tie rods. Um, just had to go in and, you know, spin off the, Driver side one just a little bit, but it's all set up and she's looking good. I'm happy with her um, and excited to get it back on the ground. So rock on and I'll talk to you guys later. One other tip whenever you're doing this, make sure that you secure the steering wheel somehow. If you don't have any help, I like using these uh, ties. I also use them to hold the shocks up or the control arms out of the way. And that's how I secure them against the wheel so that the so that the wheel doesn't turn from side to side because if the wheel turns from side to side while you're setting the toe um you might as well have not done it because it's going to move on you so <clears throat> secure the wheel somehow or if you're not like me if you have friends um go ahead and have one of your buddies hold the steering wheel so yeah cool